Hey everybody, Jason here. Today I'd like to tell you about the tiny cabin on wheels that I'm building. So I started building the tiny cabin about six months ago, last autumn before winter, and it was something that I always wanted to do, not necessarily build something exactly like I've got, but I wanted to try to use my woodworking skills and build some type of small camper. I had this type of project on my mind for a few years, and originally I was thinking about building something like a teardrop trailer. When I started looking at different designs of campers out there, I came across what was known as the Gypsy Camper, and looking at the design, I liked it more than the teardrop because it had closer to full height interior, so you could stand up, and to me it had a better use of space. So the project started about six months ago when I bought a old steel utility trailer. It was four foot by eight feet, and you know, it was in decent shape. The metal was good and had really good tires and suspension. The wood was old and worn out, but I was gonna replace all that anyhow. I found the used utility trailer on Kijiji, and I paid $500 for it. So the first step of the build was just removing all the old wood, and I basically just used a pry bar and hammer and just yanked it all off. After removing all the wood, the original screws were still in place. A lot of them were rusted in place, and so I used the angle grinder to cut them off. From there, I continued using the angle grinder to remove all the old paint. So once I removed all the old paint, I primed it and then repainted it with some black trim clad. At that point, I think the utility trailer was looking pretty good. Almost looked as good as new. The next step was building what I call the subfloor. I was using three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood for the base. As it turned out, the width of the trailer was actually a few inches larger than 48 inches or four feet. So I had to cut two pieces of plywood and join them together. Building the tiny cabin, I was concerned about moisture coming up through the bottom. So I decided to use Thixo Epoxy, which is a product from Total Boat to join up the seams. Building the subfloor, I relied on some of the just general carpentry skills I've picked up over the years, as well as uh, skills that I learned while building canoes and wooden boats. Along the edges, I also use fiberglass cloth and epoxy to join up the edges and just make them much stronger. When I had the subfloor or box all finished, I decided I'd flip it over and I used some basic truck bed liner that I picked up from Canadian Tire 
to paint the bottom. With that done, I took a bit of time just to paint the sides with some primer, just to make sure it's a little bit more waterproof. Framing the walls, I used just standard 16 inch spacing of the two x four studs. And I used four inch number eight wood screws to hold it together. Like most gypsy campers, the side walls are angled out. I wasn't sure what angle would work. So after a lot of consideration and measurement, a bit of trial and error, I came up with a six degree angle. When I built the walls, I clamped them down for a trial run first. Then I fixed them in place with some Peel Premium construction adhesive and more wood screws. At this stage I only had one layer of three quarter inch plywood as the floor and I wasn't sure if that would be thick enough, I didn't want it sagging. So I added another three quarter inch sheet of plywood to the bottom. I wasn't completely finished with the framing process. The roof wasn't on yet, but winter was coming and so I moved it into the wood shop. I wanted the Gypsy Camper to have an arched roof, so first I built a form and then I laminated up some long lengths of western red cedar to create the arched beams. Once I had enough roof beams, I put them in place and used some steel brackets to help secure them in place. When I was building the roof beams, I had a lot to consider. One consideration was the overall length of the roof beam, and that would end up determining the width of the roof, and I had to keep it within the legal requirements to have the trailer legal on the road later on. Another consideration was the arch itself and how much headroom I'd have inside the little camper when it was all done. I was hoping that I would have enough space that I could stand up comfortably. And probably the most important consideration was what the overall height of the trailer would be. I didn't want it to be too top heavy, but even more important, I wanted to make sure I could get it back out the workshop door once they were all in place. So with the roof beams in place, it was time to start doing the exterior siding. When trying to decide how I would finish the exterior of the tiny cabin, I decided I would just look at other cottages and cabins and get inspiration from them. I really liked the look of cabins that were paneled with cedar siding, and so decided I would go with that. Cedar was a good choice because it's a lightweight softwood, it also has some rot resistant properties, and it's also known or believed to keep away bugs. Anything that'll help keep the mosquitoes out down the road is definitely worth trying. I used tongue and groove cedar siding that I got from an Amish wood mill down the road and the total cost of doing the exterior walls was about $400. Spring had arrived, so I decided to move the trailer back outside 
With the natural light and fresh air, I much preferred working out there. I hadn't framed in the back wall yet because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to easily get materials inside the tiny cabin later on. But after doing the exterior siding and considering how I would build the roof, I realized I really do need to put that back wall on. So I framed out the back wall and left myself a 28 inch opening for the door. Like the other walls, I used some Peel Premium construction adhesive and wood screws to hold it in place. With the back outside and the walls all finished, it was time to panel the roof. I decided to continue using the cedar tongue and groove boards. They worked well for the walls and I thought they would look nice on the inside of the trailer once it was all finished. Working on the roof was fairly tricky. The suspension of the trailer made it quite wobbly and it was pretty tight quarters working between the roof beams. I continued to use the Peel Premium Construction Adhesive, but I was really careful when I applied it to not apply too much to the beams. I didn't want any seepage later on and have the construction adhesive show. With the paneling on the roof, it was really starting to take shape and I really liked the progress so far. I got myself some flat stock steel from the same Amish I got the cedar paneling from. Fortunately, they're nice and close by and they do that type of work. This is the same type of steel that you'd normally use for steel roof. Usually they would add some type of forming to it, but I want it to be nice and flat on the roof of the tiny cabin. I used a type of silicon adhesive between the steel sheeting and the cedar wood paneling. I did this to help prevent any water from seeping in from the edges and then eventually flowing through the tongue and groove boards and getting into the camper. With the majority of the exterior work done, it was time to finish off the side paneling. I had to sand off any dirt and grime as well as any weathering that had taken place over the couple weeks that I'd been working outside. I used my rotary palm sander with 100 grit sandpaper to take care of that. I didn't sand too hard, I wasn't focused on making it smooth, but I just wanted to remove any of the dirt and grime. I trimmed out the corners with some western red cedar. I think the contrast and keeping it consistent with the western red cedar roof beams and then trim being western red cedar as well will look nice when it's done. Having built a few cedar strip canoes, I typically use the eastern yellow cedar and the western red cedar for a nice contrast and I think it looks pretty good. With the western red cedar corner trim in place, I did another quick sanding before using some clear coat finish. I used a basic transparent clear coat finish that I picked up from Home Depot. It was Bear brand and an oil based finish. This stuff had very high viscosity so I wore some disposable gloves while working. It was basically like painting with cooking oil. Okay, so that's how far I've gone so far. In the next video, I'm gonna start building a solid Western Red Cedar door, fit it, and trim it out. So hopefully you liked the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching.